Hello, I'm Megan Van Emmen, Extension Beef Cattle Specialist with Montana State University, and today's webinar is focusing on how to collect those samples for forage and feed analysis. You can also find more information on our Forage Sampling Mont Guide, MT 201610AG, on Montana State University's Extension Publications page. So the first question is why should we be collecting feed and forage samples? The first being quality of that forage or feed for our livestock ration development. This also includes the factors of nutrient requirements where we can develop accurate rations to meet those nutrient requirements based on the accurate assessment of those feedstuffs on your operation. Third, if we cannot meet those nutrient requirements based on your forage or feed analysis, we can then de develop new rations including additional feeds or supplements to help us meet those shortfalls in the requirements for your cattle. This also is important as we de can develop forage mixtures, especially for those mature cows and heifers out on pasture during the winter months where we may want to prolong our high quality forages by mixing with low quality forages. Some equipment we'll use here on the left we have for our forages needing a forage probe which can be attached either to a hand drill or an electric corded or cordless drill. We attach this forage probe and that then can collect our samples for us from each of our stacks of hay. Now one thing to keep in mind for a forage probe is maintaining a sharp bit as we collect those forages. And you can pick up one of these forage probes online or you can also contact your local extension agent to determine if they have one you might be able to borrow to collect your samples. Second would be having a five gallon bucket available where we can collect all of our samples into this, the five gallon bucket within a stack mix that sample and create a representative sample that we can send off for analysis. Th third would be sample bags and these are used for us to collect our samples and then send them to the commercial lab for analysis. Fourth, you do not necessarily need a drill but it does make your job a lot easier when you're collecting your forage samples because uh, using a hand drill can be very tiresome and it is a lengthy process. Now on the right column for standing forage samples we want to create a square foot box whether that's with PVC or 2x4s and uh, we'll show a picture of that here in just a few slides. We would need forage clippers. Uh, you can also use scissors to be clipping those stems within the square foot box. Another five gallon bucket which we will mix our samples and collect a representative sample and then those sample bags as well. Now when we consider large round bales when we're collecting samples from a single stack of hay we want to sample at least 10 percent of the bales. So if you have a hundred bales in a single stack you would want to collect 10 bale samples and this should be from all throughout the stack top, bottom, middle depending on how you have your uh, bales stacked and we can collect two cores from each sample. Now in this picture we have a hand drill shown and like I said previously this is extremely tiresome and a lengthy process so having a corded or cordless drill can really speed up the process and save a lot of time and strength. We're collecting these samples from the circumference of the bale which we can see in this picture. And like I said, you want to collect this from all over the stack. Do not collect just from your, your best looking bales. Make sure you're collecting a representative sample. We'll also want to focus on collecting samples and main, maintaining those samples in a single lot or load of hay or a single field to ensure we have accurate analysis across your entire hay uh, production. Now for square bales, once again we want to sample at least 10% of the bales in the stack or in a lot or field. 
we are going to collect these samples perpendicularly to the bale's surface, which can be seen here in this picture. You can also note that this person is using a drill to collect their samples, which can connect to the forage probe and save them a lot of time and energy while collecting those samples. From large square bales, you can collect two cores from those bales. Once again, we would take a representative sample, those 10% of bales from the stack, put them in our bucket, mix those samples up, and then collect a single sample from that lot of hay. Um, I generally recommend making sure you have plenty of sample, which means I try and collect approximately half of a one gallon bag full of a representative sample for a lot of hay that we can send off for analysis. This ensures that there's plenty of sample for the commercial lab to utilize when analyzing your sample. Now, here is an example for our standing forage. As we see in the picture in this upper right, here is our square foot box that we use as we're collecting the sample. We want to ensure that we're collecting a random sample across our entire field or pasture. Typically, we use what is called the M pattern, which will be on the next slide. We will stop at regular intervals across that M and put down our foot square box, and then we will clip the forage from within that box at grazing height. This is where our clippers will come in. As we can see, they're basically just forage clippers to collect that forage. So we will also carry with us our five gallon bucket. We will collect each foot square, put that in our five gallon bucket. All samples for that should be cut within three inches long so we can get an accurate mixture across the field and then collect that representative sample. Now, if you have a very large field or pasture, we need to increase the number of samples we collect for a representative sample. If you also have a field or pasture with large variation, more samples should be collected to ensure a representative uh, sample for, for that area. Here is that M pattern. So if we have this rectangular field or pasture, we are basically walking in an M fashion across this field or pasture and stopping at regular intervals to collect our samples. So within these red dots, we would collect a foot square sample, um, clipping at grazing height um, to get an accurate representation of what our animals would be consuming. Now, silage is a little bit different. Um, if silage is packed and stored properly at the correct density and moisture, crude protein and fiber will remain stable during the storage and fermentation process. So we can sample our silages prior to packing as it comes out of the field. We want to collect multiple samples from each chopper wagon prior to packing. We want to make sure and sample from the front, top, bottom, middle, and back of the load. And then once we have collected that sample, we want to make sure they are stored in the fridge or freezer, and then we can mix all of the, our samples together. So having a separate uh, one gallon bag for each chopper wagon, and then storing that in a fridge or freezer until the entire chop has completed, or until these field you are currently chopping in is completed, then we can mix those samples together and get a representative sample of our silage bunker or pit. Now there are different ways to collect our silage samples after they have been packed. Uh, for example, for an upright silo, we don't recommend sampling from the top or bottom three feet because that is our spoilage area. So to collect an accurate sample, we want to remove the spoilage first and then collect our silage sample. For a silage bunker, uh, for a safety reasons, do not collect from the face of the bunker. That silage is unstable and may fall and be a uh, safety hazard to the person collecting the sample. So you should remove the silage from the 
the face of the silage bunker and place in a pile on the bunker floor and then collect your sample from that pile. We also can store silage in bags and we can collect those samples from the face of the bag once it has been opened or we can core into the bag and collect our sample that way. One thing to keep in mind if you do collect core samples on those bags you need to seal those holes with duct tape or another form of tape um, once you have collected that sample to ensure the anaerobic fermentation continues. Now we also have what is called TMR sampling or total mixed ration sampling. Um, for these samples you want to mix the TMR just as you would it when you're ready to feed and then distribute it in the bunk. Then we will collect samples along the bunk line for our TMR. Um, this includes the top, middle, and bottom portions as well as along the entire bunk. Um, place all those samples in your five gallon bucket, mix them up really well, and collect approximately a quarter of the total sample. Now once again, I recommend having at least a half of a one gallon bag full to send to the commercial lab to ensure there's sufficient amount of sample for them to analyze. A few sampling tips, um, like I just said, always collect plenty of sample. It's always better to have too much than too little. Make sure you're collecting a representative sample of your lot or load of feed or hay. And to make your job a lot easier, having a corded drill or even a cordless drill uh, for your forages. Now, um, one thing to keep in mind about your cordless drills is that you should have plenty of backup batteries for that cordless drill because you will run out of battery power uh, quite a bit as you're collecting all of these samples. With that, I'm Megan Van Emmen, Extension Beef Cattle Specialist with Montana State University. Please let me know if you have any questions and have a great day.